You're listening to the New Old Heads podcast, shot live every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash new old heads and released every Thursday at noon via bringingdowntheband.com. The show is brought to you by Coleman Dental, Printfinity, Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the show directly by becoming a member at patreon.com slash new old heads. You are now tuned in to the New Old Heads podcast. I am Major Seventh. Uh, the entire crew literally is here. My man Jay Moore is in the building. How are you, sir? Don't ask me how I'm living because you know I'm living swell. Man. Game out the gate. I like that. Longevity. How are you, buddy? Good. Yeah? <laughs> doing good. Doing great. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for asking. Yeah. You Actually, ask. you know, uh, Superman does good. You do well. I like that. No, I'm doing I like good. That. That's, I meant that. Oh, okay. Uh, See, there you go. Every day. You ask, you, you, you'll ask every price 60 shows how I'm doing. I, and I appreciate it when you do. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's just, you know, I just don't think to say it. Or you don't care? No, it's not that. Okay. Well, yeah, you know, I mean. I thought you was going to hit the button on me. No, I don't. It's not that I don't care. Appreciate you, man. That means a lot. My uh, man, my man, DJ J. Div, what's happening, man? Salutations. You good? Yep. Riding hey, on all my adversaries. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming, but I feel you though. Yeah. I feel you. Um, yeah. Just remember, <laughs> this this bothers me, man. And it's, it's just because a lot I'm, of things bother you. It does, but I, I'm I'm just biased because I'm a fan of both of these gentlemen. The conversation that popped up a while back, but Bink recently popped out, and he's still mad about. Um, I watched part of that video. People stealing his style, quote unquote, and he's speaking about Just Blaze. Um. He said his legacy's being played with. He said Just Blaze is a copycat. And he needs to just embrace it. Um, this is on the Math Hoffa. Math Hoffa, yeah. Oh, okay. Math Hoffa podcast or show, whatever you want to call it. And he said something that stuck out to me. He said, if you're an artist, and this is him talking to, obviously, the whole crew. He said, if you're an artist and you have your art there and somebody just traces over that art, does that make the person that traced around what you did an artist? Some people, it was like 50 50 yeah. on the responses. They were like, technically, I mean, he took his, he, t- he made his own interpretation of it, and that might make him an artist. Others were like, nah, you just a copycat. And that's basically how he described Just Blaze because he talked about old interviews um, in the early days where Rockefeller was describing Just Blaze as kind of like a chameleon. He can produce in any type, sound like Swiss beats. Just Blaze like is fired. I ain't gonna sit in I'm a fan of Just Blaze. Like he ain't good. But what? But, what, but when you when you put it in those terms, as far as tracing somebody's work, right? I mean, technically, that's plagiarism. That's what that's what Bing. Well, was there's saying. levels of it. Yeah. That's why I want to ask you, Lone, as a producer. Um, when we talk about the versatility part, to me, that's always been a good thing. Now, I think there's levels because what is difference between being versatile. And just blatantly biting multiple or different types of producers. But as it relates to that, just that comment about, because you said his levels, the comment about the tracing over and Just Blaze being versatile, is that necessarily a bad thing? Because a lot of the comments, people were saying Bink is just in his feelings because. So here's what I would say. Because I kind of feel him no longer. No, I get it. And I, I get feel it. him. Cause, no, I get it. Because so you think about that sound. Well, well, here's what I would say. One of the, the most important, have you has anybody here read Steal Like an Artist, the book? Mm-hmm. I have not. It's a great book. He lying. It's a great book. Most, a lot of creatives, have, it's a, it's a, it, it kind of deals with this idea. Um, and so there's a difference between like plagiarism and stealing is, is the whole premise, right? Right. right. And what do I want to start with this? All right. So I think a natural process of anybody that is a creative that is learning something is stealing. It's, okay. it's finding somebody you like, finding things that you like, doing it your own way. Part of that is emulation. I remember the very first rap that I ever memorized was uh, Jay-Z and JD's uh, Money, Money Ain't a Thing. thing. Mm-hmm. Wrote every lyric down and, you know, mm-hmm. studied it, right? The first beats that I was making was like, emulating the stuff that I was listening to at the time, trying to make my stuff. I remember there was a time when I was trying to sound like Premier because I was trying to figure out what he was doing to make his mm-hmm. stuff sound the way it mm-hmm. did, right? What happens and I think is going to happen more so often. Now, granted, we're talking like late 90s, 2000s with this conversation, right? Right, right. I think there's a time period where an artist is still learning to where like if they, if they get pushed to a specific level, while they're still in that phase of finding who they are artistically, mm-hmm. you're going to experience a lot of that. And so is it 
bad? Is it wrong? I don't know. I, I'm not. I, I honestly, I'm not really here for the. Did Just Blaze do it intentionally? Probably not. That is the part. Yes. He probably didn't do it intentionally. That's the part. He probably heard some stuff from Bink. He probably picked up some stuff from this person and was like, cool, I'm going to turn this into whatever sound it is or whatever. He is kind of a chameleon, but Just Blaze does have a specific type of sound that he eventually, we know Just Blaze sound. Oh, he definitely honed his sound. Now, I does agree. he sound exactly like Bink? No, but he does sound, they sound similar. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. sound like Timbaland. Timbaland has his own sound. That's the point Bink made. Bink said, go listen to... Swiss Beats sounds you know, uh, his own way. Hola Ovito, Ovito. He's like, that don't sound nothing like the rest of the beats on the album. He's right. It doesn't. Who produced that one? That's Timbo. So he's saying that to say, when you see these people, Pharrell, he's like, when you see, hear Pharrell beat, there's no question that's Pharrell. He was like, but back in this era, he felt like Just Blaze was... Maybe it wasn't to his knowing, but he feels like it was like you blatantly were biting my style and using that to, you know, get closer to the hove. And, and Math, Math Alpha made a good point. He was like, man, but if Just Blaze is a kid that's trying to get his break and the greatest rapper alive is like, yo, whatever you're doing, keep doing that. What is he supposed to do? Exactly what he did. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. So what what give me a, a specific example of a, a Just Blaze track that sounds like a Bink track? Um. I'm trying to think of something that would be close. I don't know. They do, they do sound similar though. Yeah, I, I don't. There's, I, I there's, couldn't give you something. But I have I'd, to go back and listen. I have to go back and listen compare. to the track list compare, comparatively. But because yeah, I want to do that too, because I, I've never personally felt like I heard Bink when I, I've heard. I'll, I'll tell you Just an example. Blaze. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you an example. Um, go listen to Philadelphia Freeway. Just okay. Blaze has the the majority of the production on that on that project. It's a good project. Damn, damn good project one of my favorite Rockefeller releases that production style when you listen to um, All My Life wait a minute okay you know me, what All me, My Life does kind let of let me sound double like check because I can't though. remember if Bink when I, that's the song with uh, him and uh, that beat Nate is crazy Dollar. by the way yeah that Nate does kind of sound like a Bink but let me double beat. check because I don't, I don't want to uh, because Bink had, I think Bink well, had production to, on there as well to, go ahead Lone I'm sorry to, to Bink's defense here is he holding on to something maybe that he shouldn't be holding on to I think twenty I, years later. Yes. Yes, probably. But, yes. But I. But but to, for his to to his defense, I would say that, oh, that I didn't even know. Bink. Yeah, Bink did that one. Okay. Bink I did what? That's but why I, it sounds like a Bink beat. But I thought all my in, life was produced. In by my him. mind, okay. I'm thinking just not. And this is just honestly, I'm thinking just Blaze could have done that beat to the point that he's talking about. But go ahead, Lon. I'm sorry. I'm no, that's cut essentially you. what I was going to say. So I mean, <laughs> I mean, I didn't even realize that Bink was all over a lot of this early stuff. I thought it was just just Blaze. Hmm. See. Yeah, Bink. What? You know, I, you Bink, know, Bink is a monster now on his own. Just Blaze had but, some of the bigger hits, yeah. but you he know, did. like which which song, like. But when you hear what we do, mm-hmm. that's Just Blaze, correct? Yeah. Sure is. That doesn't sound like a Bink beat to me. Sure doesn't. You know. So I think Just Blaze is a chameleon to an extent, but I think he found his found his he sound. His found his sound. You know what I mean? But I don't think there's anything wrong with being super versatile. But the thing is, is it's kind of expected that you need to be, you need to have a specific sound. That way people can recognize you. I mean, all of the people that we and admire. Which, again, to circle it back around, that kind of goes to steal like an artist a little bit. Well, also, so. aren't are all of you guys sampling? So if you're all sampling, it's don't kind of the don't, pot calling the kettle yeah, black. Don't, yeah, don't but, these people have, <laughs> they're like, hey, you want to talk about emulating styles and taking pieces, bits and pieces of this here? Yeah, here Bink, you go. Bink said, he did say, he said, even down to the types of records that he, they were sampling. Well, he, he said samples, that. Well, see, that's the thing. You don't that, own no uh, loops. Guru Kanye, told you that. Kanye was trying to dig at, <laughs> trying to dig at uh, Just Blaze for that same type thing as far as choosing the soul samples. Okay. Oh, but I'm sorry. The me, same thing that RZA used to right, do and right. then countless other people did before but him. But the way that he used them weren't the same way that Kanye West was using them. He wasn't necessarily speeding up the soul sample. He was using soul samples. I mean, you can't just say, I'm the only one out here that can use soul samples. So if anybody uses a soul sample, then you're biting off me. I tell you what, if you feel like somebody's biting off of you and you think, oh, they, they're jocking your style, you know, I'm taking us back to the old school with that. Um, <laughs> you better, you better, you better show and prove because like all I know is Just Blaze did some of my favorite Jay-Z, Free, Period. all those stuff, Period. all that stuff he did for diplomatic immunity. 
those Usher. Songs, yeah, yeah, those songs are legendary. Yeah, and I I don't I don't begrudge uh, Bink saying these things, but. Just Matt, Blaze put in the work. It's not like he started stealing I your, the discs that. and he, he used your MP3 to bang mm-hmm. out stuff and took your sound li- library. He figured it out and found a way to make incredible records on his own. Now, but you he know, didn't like, steal what? a beat from him and emulate it to the point where it sounds like like you have a personal example of somebody oh, taking man. a beat from you yeah. and making it again, and yep. you can tell that it has the same... Yep, you know what I'm saying. Energy that yours had. Yep, I don't hear uh, a Just Blaze beat that has done that as far as when it comes. Have you to guys beat. ever seen the movie Copyright Criminals? Yeah, like I, I think, think about whenever we have these conversations about sampling and da 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 and styles. It, it reminds me of something Shock G said. You, you can know? watch it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's so. actually oh, free for on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Um, and he said, "Look, someone could." I couldn't remember example. I think it was like an apple or flowers and could paint a beautiful picture, you know, break out the paintbrush and the, uh, you know, watercolors and paint this, in, you know, incredible picture of a subject or someone could take a photograph. Now they have to get the composition right. The lighting, you know, they have to make sure they have the right lens yep. and, you know, take a picture of this apple and make it still look beautiful, you know, who am I to say if the, the person who took the picture of the apple, you know, that's less beautiful than the person who painted the apple? Mm. So you Bink will be this, like, nah, <laughs> be like, nah, you had to paint the, the apple, yeah. but, it, no, um, but again, this, this goes back. OK, let me go a little bit deeper in this. The still like the, still like the artist idea was based upon that there's no original ideas. So we've heard that a lot. Yep. Th- there are no, it's everything is like an interpretation and you're taking it and you're, you're adapting it to some different way. Like, yep. so just blaze. Yeah. Bink's dope. Took some of Bink. Probably took some of somebody else. Probably Definitely. took somebody, you know, and Definitely. created whoever he is. So yeah, there's, there's probably truth in that, but Bink didn't just randomly get his style from out of thin air from God. Right. Like it came from somebody in he, other things he as well. Said, now here, here's the, here's, what he said and he wanted to make sure would be known. Math asked him about, well, who were your influences when you first came up? Who did you start listening to? So he mentioned Q-Tip. He was like, Q-Tip would be a person I would have said. Right, but I don't I, sound anything like Q-Tip is what mm-hmm. he said, right? Right, but but he's like, had he sounded like Q-Tip, he would have been like, yeah, my style is my style comes from comes from Q-Tip. He would have openly said So he's said more that. so upset that Just Place isn't giving him credit. I think it's about the flowers. I really think it's about him that sounds kind getting of his flowers. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, re- I, I, I think now, this has been a long time, like you said. So, I mean, does that change anything? Probably not. But clearly it's still on his mind that he, he hasn't ain't gonna get him got now. his flowers. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. That's a wrap. You're sitting in the barbershop talking bad about yeah. somebody, you know. Yeah. And I told him, I said, <laughs> yeah, he ain't getting them flowers Yeah, now. good luck with that, man. Mm-hmm. I think it might be a wrap. Um, plus, Just Blaze will probably take the, the high, high road. road. Yeah, the high road and just bow out. I think he really... He's like, he ain't saying nothing about Kanye saying something. He I like, think oh, he, he wrote a... He wrote a he posted an Instagram post, but everything was like, man, look, I ain't about to get on this road. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not about to do this. It's cool. Whatever. That's his opinion. Blah, blah, blah. Got up out of there from what I remember. So, but I mean, it's as a, as a creative man, when you get quote unquote burned, like it, it, it stings. I will say that. I think, I think the difference here though, is there's a difference between stealing, Mm -hmm. which if, and how we define it, right? Stealing is like stealing ideas, taking ideas, Mm -hmm making your own thing out of it. Like, cool, Terry has a great idea. I'm going to take that. I'm going to flip it my own way, right? right? As opposed to, I'm going to exactly do exactly what Terry was doing. Carbon copy. It's like plagiarism. Yeah. Literally what we learned, you know, like citing your sources. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's let's, let's talk. um, Yeah, we have stuff to talk about. Yeah, let's talk OG. Let's talk OG comments. Mm -hmm. Rollet comments. So the OG Melly Mel been out here in these streets. Um... Melly Mel is still dressed the same way he's dressed his whole life. Well, look, he's man. got a unique mustache uh, pattern. Yeah, Melly, has, Mel, uh, Melly Mel is uh, he's out there just looking like an ashy action figure. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah. Melly Mel be uh, in the gym, though, so y'all y'all can have that. I'm cool. Uh, you Melly Mel don't come be, huh? You scared of him? Well, I mean, I don't want to get. I <laughs> speak. I see what you did. Scared I just don't want to get. I mean, Melly you know Mel come beat yeah. beat me up. 
Um, I'm sure he has better things. He's got to get here first. World to do. Like, what you saying? Come beat up Mike. <laughs> you stupid. That's laughing stupid. at his uh, tacky hats. <laughs> Heard what you said on that podcast. Yeah. Why you said it? Heard you tell the jokes about. <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know why. But, why you said it? Why you Mr. said it? Like yeah. Rocky Three. Yeah. I heard what you said on that podcast <laughs> because he's from the eighties. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Rah. Rah. What's up, Mel? Yo, Mr. how you doing, man? <laughs> Hey, yo, Mr. T was a sad. Hey, boy. <laughs> hey, boy. Hey, boy. <laughs> hey, woman. Hey, woman. All right. So, <laughs> he, first of all, people have been responding to this interview um, <laughs> with the Art of Dialogue, I believe, is who had this one, if I'm not mistaken. I like Dewey. He's got good content. Talked about Kendrick. He actually talked about Eminem and talked about the only reason he was on this top 50, whatever, is because he white and. He sell records, and we've been down that road and mm-hmm. had that discussion before. Yeah, that's true. But uh, thank you, Lone. Um I mean, he can't rap, too. He can't though. rap. He can yeah. rap. He better than Kid Rock. Hey, I just had to explain this to one of our commenters and one of on something, I don't know, comments all over the place, but it's like, yeah, Eminem and all the legends say that, yeah, Eminem's so great. I was like, yeah, he's a great MC. Sure Ask is. him if they listen to his music. Yeah. <laughs> so Melly Mel says, and this is in relation to Kendrick, he says, I don't know what records he made like that. He said, I might know one or two of them. He ain't listen. But I don't think you ever hear Kendrick in the club like that. Mm. Then he added, he said, it doesn't translate. All right. In. Definitely don't hear Melly Mel in the club. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you. <laughs> Rah. <laughs> Rah. <laughs> hey, yo, listen, man. Melly Mel, we love you, man. Um, <laughs> OG status. Um, <laughs> he said, it doesn't translate into a number two rapper of all time. He said, nobody wants to rap like Kendrick Lamar. Nobody wants on, to rap man. like Eminem. Mm-hmm. A lot of people wanted to rap like Pac and Biggie. This is misinformed. So dude. now is this. Sorry, man. You're just misinformed. Is that just 100% misinformed? The amount. Do, like when you bring Eminem to, into that, you know how many people have tried to exactly. rap like Eminem, Eminem blah, 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 since then? Yeah. I can't argue. Of Jesus. I, like, I can't argue. It, it, might, be, it might be more than any other rapper. Yeah. Because if you ever go to those freestyle, everybody tries to get on, especially and getting that lyrical miracle type. The that's, banana fan of Laffy yeah, Taffy. That's, that's <laughs> all Happy hour. Eminem's influence. Like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. plus, when people say you don't hear Kendrick in the club, got you know. Once That's again, a lie. shout out to the OGs. But how would you know what gets played in the club? Yeah. You don't go. If I didn't work in these clubs, I would never go. And I'm 45, and mm-hmm. these guys are these guys were adults when I was a show enough child. Yeah. So <laughs> you were what? Yeah, like you know, like these guys. What like, kind of child were you? A show enough child. Okay. You what know, era so are we in? At this point. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm bringing back old words, y'all. I don't Jive, care. You, you jive turkey. Yeah. What are you talking yeah, about? I'm, I'm, you know, we just on the, on, the, on the podcast lamping. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure enough. Yeah, I'm going to leave here and go see if I can meet up with some skeezers. <laughs> <laughs> Skeevy. <laughs> shout out to no, shout out. I'm mad I missed that conversation because I, I had some darts. Yo, no, shout, but, out, shout out to anybody that's out there skeevy. I'm but sorry, whenever, like, it, it, and it, it kind of, when, when uh, what's his name? Big Gip was talking about, man, you don't hear that in the club. You're not in the club, man. And, and if just, you are, why are you why? in the club? Everybody. Why? I was talking about you don't hear these people's music in the club. You don't hear their music in the club. That's a good point. You know, and I, I don't I, know, man. It sounds jealous. It, it, I think there's a little bit of jealousy, but at the same time, it's like, look, guys, I get it. You know, you are the foundation of something and you feel like you don't get your just due and like, here it is, someone who does the same thing as you. You're where you are, and Jay Z has a billion dollars. And somewhere along the line, you're like, wait a minute, what, what about me? And I get it. And don't get me wrong, I didn't disagree with everything when I, I watched these uh, interviews with Melly Mel. He said, like, when he said, how are you going to put Nicki Minaj ahead of LL and Rakim? Now, he did have some good points. Yeah, that's a good point. point. That's a good point. You know, that, point. you know, but certain things you're like, this is just, once get off again, my lawn. It's, it's really get off my lawn. Like I said, whenever you hear somebody old talk about, <clears> no, <throat> this doesn't play in the club. Once again, how do you know? You're not in the club. You, there's no reason for you to be there. If I like, if I didn't get a check from being around twenty year olds who still listen, who want to listen to all this stuff, sometimes you just had to understand like it ain't for you. It's not for you. And if you didn't sit down and listen to Good Kid, Mad City talking about, well, no, I can't listen to all that, 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 that then don't tell me yeah, that about what Kendrick is or what he is. Let me let me play long. Let me play devil's advocate. Great, right? <laughs> You're the perfect person for devil's advocate. Yeah. Show enough. So. When he, <laughs> <or shiggity. laughs> when he says, 
nobody wants to rap like Kendrick. Okay. Is there any truth? No. To that. Can't, no, no people sp- can't rap like Kendrick. That's too. That's hard. what I was about to ask. Is there any truth? There's no truth. No, to- there's no truth to that at all. Okay. Every, I'm just asking. There, there's Kendrick has so many children out here that are trying to rap. Maybe they're not super. It's 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 a similar conversation as where I've I've seen people say back to the black thought doesn't have any influence. Yes. Black thought. The, people will say that black thought has no influence because we don't hear him in the club and we don't hear him in pop culture. Of course, you're not going to hear black thought in pop culture as a pop rapper. That's not how he raps. I agree. But it doesn't mean he's not influencing a whole generation of people who don't want to be like that. Fair. Kendrick has a unique style when, and the thing is, is Kendrick is, it's not like Kendrick is this universal. Kendrick has influences too. Yeah. He'll he's, tell you. He's open, one of them. he's open about and it. And so like when yep. you hear Kendrick, you're hearing like this mixture of like Tupac. There's like Andre in there. Nas is in there. You, can, is in you there. can hear all these different influences in there. So it's just a silly argument, to be honest. Like, I don't even really want to give it any time because it's it, the, the amount of young artists that I see come out that at least try to try to rap like Kendrick mm-hmm. and make songs like him. Man, right. He's highly influential to a certain sect of people. Yeah, but Melly Mel like doesn't that. know those like people. That. And I'm not mad at him for not knowing them because, once again, I don't know. I, I don't know how old Melly Mel is. So I'm not going to say he's. You know, if I say he's in his sixties, he'd be mad at me. But he doesn't need to speak from a place of just Not because he's, he's just assuming. because just because he's a foundation yeah. of hip hop doesn't mean that you are the ever knowing god of it. He's you know, not a gate. He, he's now, not even a gatekeeper. At now this he point. did he did say that the list would have more. Is he speaking specifically on this list? It, it's like that's what cares he cares about this list. Yeah. But that's but what I'm, what he's what he's saying is. The list, obviously, he's referencing the list and saying, you know, this was wrong and Nikki was too high and LL should have been here and there. And he's frustrated about Kendrick being number two, I believe, or is what the article said. But he's he also said it would be more credible if, and of course, he's going to mention himself. But if there were three or four OG rappers that made the list or the people that were actually putting input input into the list, because he's saying, who is this guy that just made the list from, I think it was what, Rolling Stone? Was this one? Look, we have a trash so. Rolling Stone list. Don't, we're no, all no, on the same page. We've had Rolling content Stone. about We've trash, trash no, no, no. Rolling Stone Facts. as a record <laughs> label, <laughs> MCN and as a crew. So. We definitely have. If we're going to poll 3,000 people that listen to hip-hop today, and mm-hmm. we put up, which rap style do you like better? Melly Mel or Kendrick <laughs> Lamar? What do you think people are going to choose? Yeah. And that's no slight against Melly Mel, right. but let's let's just be real. When, but if we're talking about When's the last influence? time Melly Mel put out a record? You know, because the thing is, okay, if you think you are this, Melly Mel put out some, put out some, man. I mean, nah, the thing is, I, don't I think would, he's about to put out a Gasms album no. anytime soon. Hey, hey, look, everybody got access to the same internet. I mean, he could put a joint. Out he could he put a joint. Ain't nobody copping no Melly Mel. Don't do that. Twenty twenty three. Don't do that. Don't do that. But also, this, I already did. This is part of the argument I also hate because um, I just hate. It's hate. It's just, well, I, I, it's just, is this hate just, keep, just, just keep a motif of hate. Um, <laughs> as they say, you know, he's not influential like Pac and like big. big, but it's like, unfortunately, a large part of their influence came after they died. They were at the top of their game when they died, but, you know, who's to say their influence would have maintained or been what it was had they lived? And those are all those hypothetical, con- you know, I just hate whenever... It'd be like if I was going to talk to you about the greatest running backs of all time and I compared everybody to Bo Jackson. Like he just it's it's it the body of work for the short amount of time is incredible. Yeah. But it was a short amount of time and it's almost like his myth is expanded because we're like what would have been if It's like if it's he Barry did, Sanders, if same he, thing. Well no, with, no with Barry Sanders How many, how many seasons did he play? No, Ten? Barry Sanders is solidified. He is a Hall of Famer. No, no, I get it. What I'm saying is, I to me as a kid growing up watching Barry Sanders, I'm I know for a fact that he left some quote unquote meat on. The, he could have played. No, he, he did three, like, three you or four more seasons. Numbers, he, there are people that didn't do what Barry Sanders did in 15 years. Agree. What he did in nine or ten. But when you talk about Bo Jackson, here's somebody we're like, he oh, he never went Agreed. to. I'm with you there. He, with he, you there. he never. Bo Jackson never went to training camp because he was still playing baseball. Well, and Bo Jackson back. is in the conversation of greatest athlete of all time. Our yeah. metaphor is getting out of out of control here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He says, I don't think, he said, if you don't think race plays a part in the, in the equation of how great he is, I heard one of, one of the Eminem? dudes. Yeah, talking about Eminem. Eminem will tell you, you that. Okay. Yeah. He, said, he, said one yeah. of the, he said one of the dudes that, that, that's down with him, Royce the 6'9", yeah. or, or one of those, he said, I heard he's just as good <laughs> as Eminem. one of those. I heard? Why ain't he as big as Eminem? 
because he's black. And ain't none of that expletive hard to figure That's out. That's not why. See, see Eminem we, gets we've talked about because he's white. We've talked about Royce being a better MC than I 100% Eminem agree overall. With that. Yeah. Oh, you he with Mel? Not, now you with him. I, we've had I, this I conversation. Know, I, know, I, know, I, know, I have M&M. literally made this exact I know, I know. point. Yeah. <laughs> Eminem is with Melly Mel on this point. Yeah, we've had this conversation. <laughs> but when we're, when we're talking about Eminem, Eminem had people listening to rap that otherwise wouldn't have listened to rap. Agreed. You have to give him that. Now, some of his p- fans are delusional. <laughs> a lot. A lot of his to, fans are delusional. Um, him being the greatest and nobody's better than Eminem and blah, blah, blah. Eminem will tell you he's not the best MC. But they, they will sit there and argue till they're blue in the face, literally. That he's the GOAT. That he's the GOAT and nobody's yeah. better than Eminem. Yep. And it's based on, I mean, Eminem's first song that everybody heard was My Name Is. My name is did not sound like a hip hop record to me at all. I was not expecting to hear Eminem's career go the way that it went from that song. And we're talking about the people that that's a good point. Found out about Eminem from MTV, right? Yeah. Surely there are people that listen to the Infinite. Exactly. So I mean, so. Eminem is is one of those cases of he can rap, he has his fan base. You can't take none of that away from him. As far as Kendrick is concerned. I mean that's just slander. Kendrick, <laughs> Kendrick <laughs> had slander. he has an album that has been uh, recognized by the uh, Smithsonian. Right? Smithsonian that's in there. Um, yep. I mean, Good Kid, Mad City is arguably one of the greatest first releases ever. Agreed. Look, I, I even in a, what, what year did that come out? What Good Kid? Yeah, uh, I have no idea. Fact check. Twenty twelve to twenty ten. Within the last ten years, probably or one of maybe, the best. Or maybe 20, well, one of yeah. the best albums of the last yeah, 10, ten years old. So let's just hit ten years old. But I, look, I had a conversation, and when he said it, I was like, I don't know if I can refute this in any way. Um, a buddy of mine, he said, yeah, Good Kid, Mad City is the best album of the 2000s. I said, do you mean like 2010s or two? He's like, no, Of so far, that is the best hip-hop album of the first 23 years of this century. October and 22nd, I, 2012. And I don't know if I could, re- I mean, and there are some records that I love that have come out in the last 20 years. You know, I love both Fonte's uh, uh, solo releases. Best album of the 2010s, I give him that. You know, I have to really sit down and look at a lo- list and think about it, but just off the top of my head, it's hard not to argue for it. It's yeah. up there. Yeah. It's definitely up there. Now, I'd have to be presented with a list a little bit more, a few more albums, because I can't remember all of them, but. But again, it's all it's subjective. So. It true, is. true, true. None of these are facts. Don't get your panties in a bunch. Yeah, that's the way you, we feel. Thank you, man. Thank oh, you. Rah. Rah. <laughs> you, you. Melly Mel, you hating OG. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. It might also be too. Like, uh, the, I think context might be important here too. So, like, if he's if he's referencing making all these comments based upon like where people are on the list, if he's saying Nah, Kendrick doesn't have as much influence as previous people. Yep. Because he's a newer artist. I get that. Something else that he But said, he is inspiring people. But he's making it something, seem like nobody listens to Kendrick Lamar. Something else that he said was, as it relates to criteria, was he mentioned Busta Rhymes. He said Busta Rhymes is what he would call a 360 artist. He nice in the studio, writes dope records, can perform classic projects. He's like, that would be the person that he would put closer to the top, if not the top, because he's so well-rounded as an artist. As, as that's, good not as, hate, that's not hate. As good as Busta is, Busta does not have a good kid in Mad City. Does Buster have a blueprint? No. Don't know if I agree with that. He does. does he have a victory lap. Um, yep. I don't know. Six victory. level event. ELE is mm. pretty good, man. Yeah. ELE is pretty good. That's a that's a damn good album. ELE man. too. Was, uh, I listen to yeah. that as much as I listen to anything. As, that as much as I like Extinction Level Event, it's still not Good Kid, Mad City. What there's what is Good Kid, Mad City? It just really. I, sorry, no. Like mm. that is. That is hard. That's hard to beat. I'm not if you ma- take I'm not the mad. last fifty years. Into I'm not mad yeah. at it, but I I, I don't want to play ELE. That that album is crazy. That's not playing it. I don't want. I don't want to. That's yeah, not playing it, ELE. Because you're thinking you're comparing it to Good Kid, Mad City, which is also an amazing album. They're both yeah. amazing projects. Agreed. Agreed. But yeah. there's just a certain the collect of it or how it all is very super cohesive yeah. the Buster Rhymes albums are all good don't get me wrong I like them all but I, as far as like one cohesive project Kid, there's, some, was, there's some filler on there Good Kid Mad City mad was a movie I'm yeah. not mad like, at that he could long. probably make a movie out of that album. and you know what you need every scene yep Yeah. I'm not mad at that long I, I like and that. I'm a huge Buster fan and I like I like Anarchy I like Extinction Level Event I like Genesis The Big Bang was a great album The Coming yeah. Because, yeah, he has a great discography. He has an incredible his discography. catalog is ridiculous. Yeah. When disaster strikes. There we go. Yeah, he got heat. Buster got heat. But um, 
I'm not mad at that, man, because it's like Loan said, you alluded to earlier, it's really just subjective. But what he talking about here with the influence, I'm cool on that. Uh, yeah, OG. That, that yeah, just, you, you ain't, you ain't out here in these streets one. like you used to be. Yeah, he de- Jay Moore said he ain't in the club. Terry he definitely too, ain't so. in the club. <laughs> yeah, I, I just hate that. Uh, well, you don't hear him in the club, so what? As many old <laughs> artists that we invite to uh, Circle City Classic and uh, <laughs> Black Expo, I've never seen Melly Mel in any of them. He, he'd come with Kid Capri one of these years. Did he? No, I he could. He could. He could. Come to the white He party. could have been in the club then. At that point, Her Kendrick. All, All right. right. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. Rah. Rah. I knew one more was coming. Love you, man. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate your contribution. Definitely, definitely is a huge uh, contributor to the to the culture, man. So let's let's, let's not yeah. let's get carried away here. Thanks to our partners, Dr. Coleman of Coleman Dental is our go to dentist. He's a longtime Indianapolis arts and music supporter, located right in Broad Ripple. Printfinity is a screen printing shop based in Indianapolis, owned and operated by our own DJ J Diff. Our good friends at Indie CD and Vinyl operate one of the best record stores in North America. Shop new and used in their site, or visit them in person. And the best way to support the new old heads is to visit our Patreon and become a member for as little as three bucks a month. All details on newoldheads.com. All right, we are back. Shout out to the partners. All right. Shout out to the chat. Let's talk Joe Budden, man. Joe Budden. Let's talk J. Cole well, and Joe Budden. Some people say Joe Budden. Joe Budden's. Is yeah. that what you hear? Um, the, <laughs> So J. Cole, they, they were talking about J. Cole and his new song. Uh, I think it's entitled Procrastination. And it's got broken he Quotes actually uh, did it over somebody that put J. Cole type beat. Yeah, so the story. The Didn't story- we talk about this? Yeah, oh. we talked about him okay. doing that, yeah. But J- Joe Button is say- pretty much saying that this is a it's a scam because he's saying, yo, I had writer's block. I couldn't come up with anything, so I put, you know, J. Cole type beat into YouTube, got the beat, mm-hmm. recorded it, and shouted the producer out. Joe Button is saying the producer was already known. Which the producer is? He got like 140 True. something thousand subscribers. He had like, I don't think he had that many at the time. At the time, he was uh, in the 90s. So how does he Which pronounce? Is a lot. How does he pronounce it? Long is is B? It's spelled B V T. The Batman guy. Is it Batman? Is that? I don't know. How to do that. Mm. Either What's way, B V T. B V T M A N. is Bat- Batman. Yeah, Batman. It's Batman. All right, cool. But his channel, to your point, yes. was lit. So Joe Joe Button is like he's trolling, but he's kind of saying that you know. J. Cole is always the safe guy and has the creative ways to market. I looked at it from the standpoint of the producer just got a good lob. I don't care if he had 90 or if he had, you know, whatever that he no. came up off of that. This situation. 90,000 subscribers is a lot. That's a lot. I'm not really mad at this. Like, I think it's a dope lob being a producer. Like, I don't care how we necessarily got there. If it's the quote unquote gimmick or whatever, but I think it's a good look for somebody to get a lob like that. That's it's an actual release from him. I'm not mad at it. I don't care how I they just got don't there. Don't care. Yeah, it ain't that deep. It ain't like he put it out there and was like, uh, "This is this unknown producer that right. I found and I like this beat, so I rapped over it." Right. He just said he typed J Cole type beat. Right. I like the first one I heard. Which, if he has that many subscribers, that's right. what's going. The happen. algorithm is going to work in go. his favor. Yep. There we go. So I mean, it's just one of those things that happens. Look, we should name the, this episode J Cole type podcast. <laughs> so right up. somebody can you know hit the algorithm and hmm. Joe Button can right. get mad at us too. We can do that. Yeah. <laughs> you like that? You like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want I mean, ninety thousand more subscribers for our I channel. Mean, it it takes a step off of. Trying to figure out some else's name. So. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it was going to be some Melly Mel lyrics. I think yeah. I like this one a little bit more. Hurrah. Hurrah. You, you, you would think. <laughs> Maybe it'd be hurrah. Yeah. J. Tolk. How do you spell How do you spell hurrah? I don't even know. <laughs> I think it might be R-A-W-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R. <laughs> Maybe it's, but what if it's like E-R? Might, R. Maybe so. Hurrah. 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 Is there an H at the end? Yeah, there's probably a couple of H's. Maybe. Look, I'm signing it out. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, anyways, he's like, man, the whole wave of victim pandering and victim powering. I'm like, come on, man. How did he say who? Who did he call a victim? Yeah, who's the victim here? This is Joe Budden talking about the scheme, the quote unquote scheme for J. For for J. Cole. Did J. Cole seem like just the casual, normal person? I mean, what's wrong with? Him just actually, man, Joe able- Button been on some hating ish here lately, man. He was hating on Michael B. Jordan. He was, and plus, I didn't, know out, was, I didn't know who this producer was. For so calling yeah, out, out some chick, I didn't know either. 
you know what I'm saying, clown him in high school, I'm going to be the first person to tell you. Somebody clowned me in high school and you're interviewing me now uh-huh. and I allow you to interview me, I awarded you that, but I'm still going to call you out for talking about me in high school. There's nothing wrong with that. I personally like the way Michael B. Jordan handles it. I do too. Because <laughs> you know why? I would have done the same thing. I would have done the same thing. But back to Joe Budden talking about J. Cole. <laughs> he said he got a bag for that YouTube trick he pulled on y'all too. Well, J. Dang. Cole gets a bag for everything he does. He yeah. said, I found out that the guy who just just so happened to <laughs> happen to Joe do Budden's the J. Cole type out. beat, uh, <laughs> he's the most popular producer on YouTube. Now, I don't it? know if that is. That's I don't know if that's factual. Not YouTube true. every day. I don't that's know if that's true. factual. I spend too. I, if, it, if there's anybody in this room that spends too much time on YouTube, it's me. I'm and sure I he would. No I'm idea sure the most is. popular producer is going to have more than ninety thousand followers. Yeah. Terry, but he, to your point, Terry, he, he he basically talking to you. He was like, uh, <laughs> and he said in his pandering, nothing wrong. Y'all swear I hate people. I don't. You do, and I love. When J. you Cole. have to, when you literally have to put that in your commentary. That's why uh, I enjoy the show. He hates hate lots of people. You do. Because it's like you don't want to admit it. Remember that one dude that made a song and we said, this dude sounds like Drake. Somewhere in the song he goes and they say I sound like Drake. I don't. <laughs> we literally said you sound like Drake before I heard that. True. So when you True. have to bring it up, it's kind of like one of those things that you know that's who you are and you just got to live with it, man. I mean, Joe, man Bud- in the mirror. Joe, Joe Button ain't going. Does, does the Batman guy, does he just make beats or does he make content? Question. Um, I'm just curious. What I saw was a lot of mm-hmm. production. Now, I didn't do a deep dive or nothing like that, but if he's the most popular on YouTube, if he's the most popular on YouTube, he's not. And you not. type his name, it's going to pop up. But that's Cap, that's cap just to add to his story. Like, I, I don't even know who the most popular is, but if I was to take a guess, we know how many people are on YouTube. It's got to be somebody out there that's. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, it looks like he just has beats and stuff, so. He's, I think he does. He he's a what's t- the subscriber number? He, he's a tight beats person, right? Yeah, he's a tight beats person. Yeah, but he's a lot of tight beats. He's got one hundred and forty one thousand. There we go. Yeah, but, he got a but, lot of those. But from... Curtis Curtis King has two hundred and thirty six thousand. Hmm. Oh, where Andrew? I, I I don't know how to Huang. pronounce his. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Huang or Huang. He's got two point three million. Now what? He's, he's got amazing content, by the way. So shouts to the plug there. Plug him if you're a music producer. Look up Andrew. Huang. Wait, he has how H U A N G. 2.3 yeah but he's got great content i'm talking oh, like okay. not just music but like tips and stuff like that but that was joe the button. first joe buttons didn't do his research those are you both. wrong you're just wrong <laughs> <laughs> i like to see i just i just like to see producers win man i, I just, yeah, I just I don't, like I don't, to see yeah. producers I don't, win. I don't i don't to me here's my take on it i don't think it's pandering i mm-hmm. think this is just j cole he probably Typed it in. I don't know. He probably found it. He probably Jake. wrote a song to it. Doesn't it seem believable My, to it, you? It seems yeah. super believable. Yeah. And it sounds like a song, when you listen to the song, it sounds like something that literally he had been sitting on because it doesn't sound like it would be on a project. Like Joe was even hating mm. on the... He was like, man, he even man, wrote Joe a beautiful be letter. And Joe be hating because stuff. Pump It Up is his, his most successful song and it was featured in uh, You Got Served. <laughs> <laughs> that that's He's hating. Sorry. You think... It feels, <laughs> it feels like hate. That's a dope record, though. It man. feels a lot like hate to me. I'm sorry. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just it's a lot of hate. A lot of hate. It's called today, a spade. A spade. It just is what it is. Yeah. yeah I look, I, I don't. I, I. You know when people it just say doesn't matter. People are pandering. You know what? If you're trying to get, I. We're all pandering in some ways. Uh, True. In some way. Mm-hmm. You know, just like when people say, "Oh, I think um, there was something where Joe Biden." Like shout it out to Divine Nine and like, is he pandering? Yes, yes he is. <laughs> what politician yeah. doesn't? Pander. That's how. That's True. that's the part of the poly- being in politics is you pander to people. Yeah, and we Kiss pander. Some babies. We pander to uh, to people who want to hear us talk uh, talk reckless about hip hop. Sometimes yep. it just is what it is. Yeah, you know Joe Budden panders to people. We all pander to people. If you're creating content, you yeah. are pandering to people in some sort of way. You have to because it's capitalism. Yeah, there it is. There bada it boom, is. bada bing. You know what? We're gonna get. We're gonna do a Can't whole get episode. Get away from it. <laughs> but we don't pander to anybody, and it's not even possible. And nobody would listen or yeah. watch because yeah. they're waiting for us. Let's just talk about lilies and <laughs> rainbows. It's and not gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Happiness is two nah, kinds of ice cream. I'm just done being. Oh, I'm just, there we go. I'm just being stupid. I mean, the yeah. numbers show, man. Tying your shoes for the very first time. The numbers show, man. Negative I happiness. Like, I feel like we do a pretty good job <laughs> of. Uh, Somebody knows what you're talking being about. Being negative. Yeah. 
Yeah. We've, we've I found- feel like we do a pretty good job of, of limiting our pandering as much as possible. I don't think we do anything for intentional clicks. Agree. Like I said, we don't shake ass. Yeah, nah. yeah. There's yeah. none of that. Do we do stuff intentionally because, you know, <clears throat> from a calculated angle? Of course. Because you might be Everybody interested. Does. Yeah. Because, Absolutely. But we don't. We ain't shaking ass, though. No, no I ain't shaking that. ass. And but to your point, I feel everybody does that, and everybody has their own lines that they're going to do this to. But I don't feel like J Cole's doing that. And even if he is, who cares? Yeah, yeah. And that's wrong. That's wrong. Good I'm job. At yeah, I must mean, have been a low yeah. news week for Joe Budden to, to yeah. decide he wanted to jump on that. <laughs> What'd you say? A low you know, news week, man. Joe Budden when he when he gets into these moods, he be so <laughs> he be so into it. How yeah. how how he wants you to believe? Yeah, what I'm telling you. Yeah. It's almost, yeah, I'm cool on that. Joe Budden kind of pissed me off this week. <laughs> I can tell, man. You right? Nah, I'm cool. Okay. I just don't like that energy, man. It's whack. Yeah. Well, shout out to the producer that came up clearly by the number. Somebody shouts to Batman. Shout, yeah. Shouts to pump it up. And you got served. <laughs> well, we, class, of, we classified the OG as I mean, a hater. I, th- I think you can definitely classify some hate on our end this, this episode, too. Yeah, because yeah, I hate that. We hate, we hate. <laughs> I hate that. And I ain't going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I don't hate it because I do hate it. Yeah. yeah. But it's what it is. But I'm, I'm hating from a, a loving point of view. Yeah. I think we should just all hate on Jay Z. That, that seems to be. I internet, can't hate on Jay Z. But that's an internet trend. We got to jump trend. on the trends. I yeah. was. I was that's a trend. <laughs> look, Definitely the trend. Look, I'm going to pull this up so you guys can see it. Please pull it up. Because the amount of comments, I mean, we can talk about whatever, but. <laughs> nah, you good. You good. Like, here's the clip from two weeks ago Tupac's yeah. All Eyes on Me is better than any Jay Z album. Calm down. I mean, that's subjective. Yeah, every a lot of a lot of stuff is, but he said a lot. A lot of this stuff has comments. Some people going don't crazy. like. Some people don't like Jay Z. So we, I know we plenty. Need to, we need to go ahead and get that out the air. Agreed. That people just some people don't like Jay Z, and that's fine if you don't like Jay Z. Um, so of course you're going to say that whatever Tupac did is better than Jay Z's. I mean, I was a huge Tupac fan. I was a bigger Tupac fan than I was Jay Z when he was alive. You know what I'm saying? But time has passed. Unfortunately, uh, Tupac Pac met his demise, and Jay Z continued to go. So I continued to listen to Jay Z albums and became a bigger fan of Jay Z because now I have more material to listen to. Yep. Versus I had what four albums from Tupac? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, six hundred eleven comments. Wow. Okay, okay. Dang. All Pac albums were better. They mm. got Pac killed because they know. Oh, God, so technically, we you are a fake Pac fan. Oh, oh wow! God. If Pac is here, the world <laughs> would funny. never know who Jay Z is. Oh, really, man. dude? A Tupac album is still more current and relevant than your Living Jay Z albums. Really, oh. that was out he, when they were. He is overrated. Alive. Yeah, but Jay Z mu- music don't try to wake up black people's minds. Tupac is four, Godzilla. Four, four. You can't compare Godzilla with an elephant. Does everyone like Tupac? This wow. guy in the gray hurt is a snitch. Oh, <laughs> I'm a snitch now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Shout out to Terry. Jay Z is over. Liking Jay Z makes you a snitch. <laughs> guess, guess Terry's a rat. <laughs> Tupac's All Eyes on Me is better than Jay Z's whole rap career. Tupac, wow. four album. Shoot, he's got 15 albums. Check his check the history. That's because you said he has like four albums, and he said he has 15 albums. I guess he had four anybody, before he died. Yep. Those talk, are the four that count. Ain't yep. nobody talking about the oh, Machiavelli oh. Eleven that you bought. And we from the literally bar talked top. about that. <laughs> You don't, number Jay Moore. <laughs> you don't have to compare Jay-Z to Tupac. Tupac is, is an icon and a legend who made an imprint. Yeah, okay, I can agree with that. Jay-Z is the most whack rapper from the 90s. Wow. Most, almost all Pac songs are better than every album out there. <sighs> Look, man, All Eyes on Me is better than anything Jay-Z did. It's just facts. It's just facts. It's just facts. facts. It's just facts. Who listen to Jay-Z? When, when do they come for Pac? Who listen to Jay-Z? Where do they come from? Pac all day. This you still, would think I said I didn't like Tupac. Which is not what you said. This person says, this still doesn't address the point. All Eyes on Me is better than anything Jay-Z did, which is 100% fact. All Eyes on Me More isn't material. even his best, his best album. album. More material is irrelevant. Uh, no, it's not. FJZ. Uh, wow. There, there are a lot of great rappers, but I don't think there are any rapper who has many good songs. Tupac, Will Smith is greater than Jay-Z. What? Wow. The Home. I, look, I can keep scrolling. <laughs> it's just wow. when he, I say he, I was shocked by he, the amount of comments, I was like, "There are really this many people that can, hate." Can you just do a couple more for me? Just yeah, a couple. Let's see what else I mean, and it's, and it's not even about <laughs> that they like Pac; they hate Jay Z. Yeah, yeah it's that, more that. just goes to your point yeah, that you made on there. More of that. Uh, Machiavelli is not better than Blueprint. Okay, uh, hold on. Okay, hello, lol. Everyone knows Gay Z wouldn't be nothing if Pac and Biggie were alive. Wow, oh Tupac. 
I don't know what that says. All Eyes on Me was nice, but at the time of his release, but listening to it now, I have to skip 50% of it. That's cap. Bro, Jay-Z, whack as F. <laughs> Stop That's it. Cap. All Eyes on Me has tons of filler. Pac That's go. Cap. They removing my comments. They did have a few fillers on there. It ain't full of, what do you say? It's a double album that yeah. could have been a single album, like most double albums. Yeah. Pac still has more tracks, four albums, if you only knew what the, the work that he put in. I know all of Pac's <laughs> work. <laughs> no way, Jake got some. <laughs> it's just, it's just so funny. What's so, what's so funny about that is because y'all hear me talk about the album I go to when, whenever I need to come out of a funk. Yep, it's a Tupac album. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're Would the biggest you, Tupac fan I know. That's yeah. a fact. So, so that's a it's fact. hilarious. These but comments you are snitch, hilarious. It's so funny, man. You and Six Nine out here just I'm yeah. snitching. Yeah, how, right. how does liking Jay Z equ- equate Gunner to snitching? Snitching. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. definitely a rat. In mm-hmm. the, uh, gang, you was just trying to come it. home. You wasn't locked up, but you was out here snitching. Yeah. Here's a good hey, one. Man. Hey yo, either way you slice it, Jay Z said himself, "Men lie, women lie, numbers don't." And then you saying that's subjective, but don't have a point. Plus, if you do the math, majority of Jay Z albums was put out after every rapper album who dropped got dropped. So you ain't had no other choice but just to listen. What? What? Hope got classic albums, but A E O M is greater than all of them. All eyes on me. Oh, I, again, man. I can keep going, but I'm not going to at this point. I ain't never had it, heard it as a as an acronym. Yeah, what, you know that's, that's a new age. Yeah, that's yeah. that new age stuff. Yeah. I don't want to type out all entire words. Yeah. Me against wow. the world is way better than uh, All Eyes on Me, in my personal opinion. But that's just me. Lupe's comment on our thing was. Uh, Vinny Vidi Vici dropped in 1999, boys. I was still in high school. Okay. The 336 was in 2000. I was still a teenager, so I consider that still growing up years. Okay. One could argue I always, I'm always growing up, but F a comment section for that. Anyways, my whole team was effing with Ja Heavy back then, and so was most people. One of my favorite rappers till this day. Notice he says one of my favorite rappers, not my favorite rapper. Right. Aha. Uh-huh. Anyways. Okay, that's cool. Anyways. And that's a respectable comment. That is no, a respectable sure. comment. And then he says, ba- basically, what we were done. talking about is he didn't grow up on him, yeah. and he's specifying his years. Yeah, okay. So he says, energy, beats, concepts, hits, flow. I didn't listen to Ja for super duper lyrical backflips. I listened to Ja because the Esh was dope and powerful. Okay. Also, the Robert Taylors were not out west, which Jay said they were, which they're in Southside. But oh, okay. Well, but, yeah. Learn something new. But that was a respectable comment. Very so. respectable. I'm not mad at that at all, Lupe. Not mad at that at all. That's so. We almost should make a segment and put his comment. <laughs> I mean, because he, he didn't. For the other dude that was talking crazy. He's in the comments. He's literally, <laughs> uh, he's literally in these comments, too. Wow. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Well, so. shout out to him for the engagement. He, well, he did. Well, he, <laughs> hey, he, he did he said, let say, me jump over here, too. Hey, man, hey, he, if you want to get down like that, go ahead and become a uh, Patreon. Hey, he well, did say. Uh, $3 a month, man. Shout out to Lupe for just being, you know, having a respectable comment and, and just breaking down the timeline. So it was just a nice little fact check. I ain't mad at it. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, he took right. it for what it was versus somebody. He definitely took it for Somebody what it was. going the extra length to try to discredit somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I think he understood where we were coming from. Yeah, he yeah. absolutely did. That's so, the reason why he broke it down like that. Yep, yeah. which I respect. I respect that. Yeah, yeah. for right. sure. That's solid. Shout out to Lupe. Yeah, Definitely. man. And you know what? Go, go shout to Ja Rule too, man. Nah. See, I, I've never been somebody that just didn't Bro, in the like com- Ja Rule, in the and com- I've said that before. Yeah, in the clip, if I'm not mistaken, or if we go back and watch the show, I said, "Be clear, Ja Rule had a run." He definitely had a run. So I didn't say nobody was sitting up here hating or laughing at Ja Rule. We said he had a run, which he did. No, look, I was outside during that time, so I get why. And we're gonna act like just because Fifty Cent told us not to like him, he didn't sell all them yeah. records. That's what. That's the I whole. Was, point. I still run a Ja Rule track look, man, right now. The, the, yeah. But the conversation is based around one thing: How many people do you know personally? Uh huh. That you've met in your life where Ja Rule is their favorite rapper. I can't name you one that I know personally. I can't name you one. Maybe 50 Cent Son to <laughs> oh, Spidey. Wow. Uh, yeah, I knew. <laughs> no, but, and, and that's oh, not man. even, and I'm not even trying to clown. I'm just saying, trying to say like, I've never met that person. So, I don't know that person. So, you, and I'm anybody? not, it's not even, and I think people were clowning Ja Rule when he did that Papa Cristo com- commercial, remember when he yeah. was like, I yeah. thought it was hilarious and great that he was yeah. doing that. Ja Rule the stuff had, he was doing with Firefest, maybe not as much, but. That uh, was stupid. But <laughs> ja, ja Rule definitely had heat. He definitely had a run. He had a run. And he got some albums that are really good. He so, thought he was Tupac for a minute too. 
I don't know about that part. He did. No, I'm talking about he did. I'm talking about I don't know if that was the play. Is what I'm saying. I, no, I he absolutely know. said he no, was he, the he ghost was, of Tupac. When he said, when did he, he said y'all want to see nice Pac? Tupac back? Yeah, when he was under pressure, he was like, Tupac is here now. Yeah. I remember that. I was, I was like, like, no, he's not. This is a weird time. See, <laughs> see, yeah, this, this this where you lost me, sir. Even if I was messing with you, that's where you lost me. Yeah, man. Yeah, he had a unique voice and a joint with um. The B Brown joint, I the helicopter. Do it, uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? When then he had a. No, you're getting by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, I ain't need that one either. No, I, I like that, that record. You, you like that I, one? Yeah, I like Man, that. Man, Bobby, Bobby ja Brown was had on it. Of course, I liked it. Ja Rule had True. hits. He had hits, for sure. And, and every uh, R&B chick he hopped on the track with, that mug went. That's right. Yeah, I ain't gonna sit there in front. He was he the go-to guy for like, like I said, there was a time when Ja Rule was the top dog at Def Jam, not Jay Z. Absolutely, that's facts. I want to talk to Jay more about his boy because Ice T said. More hate. Uh, it might be, man. I think this might be. We got to figure out how we gonna name what, this. What 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 Ice T said? Uh, he said he stopped making solo albums because <laughs> read the just read the title. Read yeah, read Ice T says rappers looking weird and getting soft is why he stopped making solo albums. I love that. Uh, you know why Ice T ma- stopped making solo albums? Hold on, before you start vouching for him. Hold on. He said, "Let me read. Let me read the quote." Okay. So he said, "He said they out here looking weird, Jack." Hip hop. <laughs> Oh, he put the jack on it because we taking it back to the old school. That's, it's era. What's today? He said yeah. hip hop changed. The music got goofy to me. The kids started looking weird. <laughs> it all turned into something I, I wasn't. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> the kids started looking weird. It all turned into something I wasn't comfortable I see with. I forgot what he looked like in Breaking. Don't do that. Don't I'm do just that. saying. Don't do that. Don't do that. He was looking uh, weird. Don't do that. It says all, it all turned into something I wasn't comfortable with. There was a point where I was selling tons of records and then it cooled off. I felt a certain way. Then I realized Public Enemy, Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, and Wu-Tang Clan weren't selling records either. Man, he was so rocking was a around paradigm shift. with a, with a, uh, a mid-drift that had holes in it. Hold on, but he continued. Glove, driving gloves. Jay Moore, he continued, <laughs> he though. kids out here looking weird. <laughs> he said, these kids got softer, and soft is not something I'm able to give. First word in hip-hop is hip. So how something stays hip for over 10 years is difficult. He, he, Look, you know, he's dropping game. You know why? Jay Moore, now vouch for your boy, weird. man. No, it's not even that I can vouch. Because, of course, yeah, they look weird. Ice T, you're in <laughs> your 60s. I'm 45, and these kids look weird to me. You know what oh, I'm saying? Man. But the thing is, you didn't. You stopped because you saw them TV checks yeah. and you saw those music checks. It was like, let me go hop on Law and Order. And the wild thing is, he was only supposed to be on Law and Order for four episodes. He's been on there for 20 years. It's now. almost 23 tw- he's, he's years. 20, he's going to hit 25 years on one TV longest, show. Man. Longest running male actor in TV history. And the thing is. 23 years. 23 years. And the thing is, you got to understand, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, Law and Order is on. Facts. So yep. he's getting. All day and day. So and he just got to start on the walk. Uh, yeah, walk so back. he's. He, he's done because i if look if i if you tell me i can get this tv money or this music money i'm sorry i'm not trying to get in the, and he got him he still does heavy metal he's still but body count mm. um but as far as him doing rap music and looking weird and these kids i, I don't know man like, i don't want to hear ice t album yeah so <laughs> Hey, you own one a day, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, Look, if we don't keep hating, he own one a day. He's talking about they are looking weird. Every, if they every, wasn't looking weird, I don't want to hear a new Ice T album. Yo, you came back on one life. after missing this last episode. <laughs> man, I don't want to hear Ice T album. <laughs> I mean, I don't either. But <laughs> Yo, what's hey, man, up, man? I'm just saying. They love the Ice T, man. I love what you nah, do. I sure. love what you Come did on, in the man. past. Come on, man. Ice T is an icon, He is, but that don't mean I want to hear something new from me. I you wouldn't run it, probably not, because I'm gonna judge it. So no, I'm just I mean, leave, like, let it be. Jay Moore go run it. No, I'll be honest, probably not. Like, because I like I I like I like young wild iced tea. I don't want to yeah. hear rich iced tea. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd rather listen. I love listening to Ice T's interviews, like his podcast, The mm-hmm. Daily Game. I love all that. But it gets to a point where I, even artists I like, I don't want to hear nothing new from him. But he said hear. he said besides, I still do Ice T. Art of rap shows, which is he said that which is my legacy in hip hop. He said, "Think of it like seeing Frank Sinatra." He said, "You want to hear the classics?" Sure. So I'm not mad yeah, at that. I don't mad at if all. he had a yeah. Vegas residency, I might go check him out. Not for sure. I yeah. rock with that, but I don't yeah. want to hear nothing new from him. No, you sure. don't want to hear Ice T on trap beats. I would want to hear absolutely Ice- not. <laughs> I want to hear I want to hear Ice T with Sugar Free together. Well, you know they might and Ice Cube on there. Sugar Free mm-hmm. put out a, a, have a group new record called Lipton. last year that I liked. Yeah. They have a group called Lipton. It was called mm-hmm. no, Wow. No, 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 no. Wow. We're not doing that. Ice T. Wow. Sugar T and Ice Cube. 
Yeah. Lipton. Summertime <laughs> flavors. Yeah. Um, summertime flavors. Yeah, I can dig that. Or like they, they could be called brisk. brisk. No, Y'all remember the no. brisk yeah. iced teas? Those are fire. Yeah, yeah, actually they were. They got them at a lot. In the front, in the you better check the cooler. date on some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what you saying, man? What you saying? No, I'm just saying, like, if you buy food from certain places, like you know, when you go like the front of like TJ Maxx and they got snacks, I'm like, I'm not buying any food. Buy I just, some, I just wanted a pair of socks, buy some and, candy, and they're like stuck together. Snacks. <laughs> what yeah. you not, say, Lone? I'm not buying. They had some velaments up there. I don't even know. They don't even make those velaments. Yes. <laughs> so if they had, so, if, so if TJ Maxx had like they had some Fruitopia, they had stuff up there. You know they don't make no more. Yo, Man, if TJ Maxx. I, had, I wish I could find me a new Fruitopia. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Hey, That'd Fruitopia be lit. was fire, man. It was. It was the, lit. whatever the green flavor was. I, I would mess with that one heavy. Mm. Yeah, that blue joint. The blue joint was good too. And we should have known. We should know. We should have been drinking. There's nothing that just occurs in nature that's blue like that. No, I mean that was back when if if you was drinking something that said juice and had fruits on it, you thought you was doing the right thing. You're doing the wrong thing like a mug. No, yeah. not the way wrong thing. The much, right thing. Way too much sugar. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. So we was at the age where too much sugar didn't do nothing. Look. They do it now. Naughty Pie said he played a kangaroo in Tank Girl. Kind of weird. Who played a what? kangaroo? Ice T. Did he? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, no, I remember Who that. said that? That's Naughty, you said Naughty Pie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Weird, Naughty Pie. yeah, with uh, Lori Petty. He probably didn't need that check. No, he said that was like one of his first big checks in from Hollywood. Oh, really? Because, you know, when he was in New Jack City, his first acting is he got paid scale. What did he get paid when, where he was getting hunted? He said that was another big check. He was, you know, at that what point, that? he had like four or five He got dropped movies. in the jungle some damn where. Surviving the game. Yeah, surviving the game. With Rucky Howard. And they, they was hunting. I sleep hunting, on that one. That's actually a really good movie. Is, is, that, a a two, good movie? is that a 2B um, movie? I don't no, know. It's actually, it's pretty decent. Oh. Um, Charles S. Dutton is in that one. They was Job hunting the humans. The rich, rich guys hunting humans. Hunting humans. What else was Ice T in that was cold? Law and Order? <laughs> yep. <laughs> 23 years that in, uh, Le- Le- I mean he's been in it so Leprechaun long Leprechaun in the hood mm. No, nah, that, that, I don't need he's that He's been on Law and Order he so long He was in Coco Coco Alright now Alright let's, let's, oh, let's, let's man. Here we go I mean that, it's probably good <laughs> <laughs> Even Red August shake. That's when you know it's bad Red August shaking his head man I'm just saying I, I feel you though I'm in love with the Coco He absolutely oh, is yeah. That child looks just like him He can't deny that child <laughs> Well, you sound old when you said that. No, he really did copy and paste, like, mm-hmm. his face on to a child. It's yeah. wild, like, you know. How old is Ice T now, man? He got to be. He's a uh, statesman. Fit, late 50s, probably. No, he older than that. I think he's in his. He I older mean, than I see older than rest that. Rest in peace to his uh, comrade on, on Law and Order who passed away. Richard Belzer. Yeah, rest in peace to him. He was born in 58. Yeah. God, my mom was born in 58. He's 65, 65 years old. 65, dang. I see up there, yeah. ain't he? Yeah. Getting I'm that paper. Original gangster. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I don't want to hear a, a rap album from a 65-year-old. <laughs> just just <sighs> play me your old stuff. No, I don't want to hear nothing No, I mean, you. it's just like, what are you going to, like, I see, we know you are, it's it's not even the point where you rich, like, you wealthy. Wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> like, He's definitely wealthy. Ice-T got Rob Report type cars. Yeah, like, you man. know, it's not like. He definitely wealthy. That's he he messes around and start rapping about stuff that I just don't know about and to get the feeling bad. Man. Yeah. Well. Ice T been out here, Jack. <laughs> That's right, Jack. He's been <laughs> out here. <laughs> what you know about Danny Brown? What do you know about Triple X? That was a good album. Triple X. Yeah, yeah was that chick, movie with, she literally had a uh, that movie Xanax with on her tongue. Oh wow. On that album cover. Yeah, it was a good album. It was. I Why saw, I I saw him it? in uh Bloomington. <laughs> I saw him at uh Bluebirds, I think. Mm. Oh, was it Blue Bird? I think so. You talking about it in Bloomington? Yeah, I think so. I think I saw him at the Marat, or what they call now. Did the, he come? No, he didn't. I saw come. him oh, here. National Center. I saw him here at the Vogue too when he was. Running or was the, it the Vogue? He it was, was the, the Tigger suit. Yeah, yeah, it was him and Black uh, Milk. Black Milk, and then Black those Milk. Uh, the the Indian dudes that used to rap. That's ah, racist. That's racist. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's a great name. Rhapsody, I think, was at that show. She was. Yeah. That's a wild show. It that is. is a different. Yeah. That's a different. And it wasn't very many people there. Mm-mm. Black Milk was at. Um, yeah, caught him at Sub T, I think, in Chicago. Um, I don't know what, who was who was with him. Somebody opened up for him, but I yeah. saw him. I saw him uh, here dude, at the high dude five. is. Um, I got a picture with him. I slept on his ability as a MC. No, he was a dope producer, but he actually makes good. His projects are dope. 
Like I think he, I actually bought all the Rhapsodies mixtapes off of her that day. I wish I had got her to sign them. She that was real cool. Yeah. We had a conversation for a minute. Oh, she, ki- she killed that big Crit show, by the way. That was at. Uh, oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah. She killed that. Yeah, I got a picture with Crit then, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he sure. came He came to Coaches. Coaches, coaches yeah. yeah. Long sent it to me as, as soon as he got. <laughs> That's the only reason. It's crazy because I, I, we was going to go to Coaches, too. And I was man. like, nah, I think I'm going to just go on to that. That's the only reason I took the pic. Long literally sent it to me as soon as he took it. I said, you <laughs> jerk. <laughs> he killed that show, though. Shout out to Crit, man. I, like, I could use some more. Uh, I think I'd have been to three really crit shows. Knows how to perform. He he'd yeah. be crit would be a. Uh, I wouldn't have to boo him. He'd be a three. He'd <laughs> right. be what uh Melly was talking about a three sixty guy. Yeah, crit I seen would him be twice at, at Old National and once at the Emerson. So, as I always, say make sure you go to newoldheads dot com. All the education you need this year. Like it, subscribe, sign up, pay for it, share it, all that type of stuff. We appreciate the support as always. <laughs> Shout out to the chat, and we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> hey boy. J. Cole type podcast. <laughs> hey woman. <laughs> <laughs>